There's a very famous incident where the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and a man came and he started to insult them. And the Prophet ﷺ is holding it in. Abu Bakr who is also a very forbearing person, he can't take it anymore. So Abu Bakr anhu, especially as the man insults the Prophet ﷺ, stands up and starts to respond. And the Prophet ﷺ, he simply gets up and he leaves. Abu Bakr goes to the Prophet ﷺ after that. Fearing that he offended the Prophet ﷺ and Rasulullah ﷺ, he says that before you spoke, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel that was to respond on our behalf. As soon as you started to defend us, the angel went away and a shaitan came and sat there instead. A devil came and sat there instead and the Prophet ﷺ said, I did not want to sit in the presence of that devil, in the presence of that shaitan. Now SubhanAllah, what that teaches us is there are certain things that offend the angels, certain things that make them go away. Now the angels that write, they're not going anywhere no matter what you do. They will write down every curse word, every nasty thing that you say or do. And though it's offensive, they will write it because they have to write it. But there are other angels, angels of mercy that come when you do dhikr, when you remember Allah, when you do tahara, when you do wudu, when you pray. Those angels will go away from you and instead they would be replaced by shayateen. So it's important for us to think, you know, what are we doing? Doing to offend the angels as well? What are we doing to send them away? What are we making the ones that have to write, write down? And aren't we ashamed of that? And so SubhanAllah, we find anger and foul language and sin and all of these different forms of corruption and disobedience. They send them away. Not only that, but the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that there are things that physically repulse the angels as well. And particularly, the Prophet ﷺ taught us not to eat garlic or onion before we come to the masjid. One of the biggest lost sunnahs of the masjid is good breath, using the siwak before the prayer, brushing your teeth before the prayer, having good breath. And the Prophet ﷺ, he instructed us and he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even the angels are affected by that which affects those who pray. The angels also don't like bad breath. They don't like to smell that garlic or that onion. Rasulullah said not to spit to your right side when you pray because there's an angel that would be there. You can't physically harm them, but don't do anything to offend them. Now, even on the spiritual side of this all, there's a very beautiful statement that's attributed to Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, that he was asked, how do the angels know that a person intends a good or an evil deed? And you know what he said? He said, when someone intends to do good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes a sense of musk to start coming from him that only the angels can smell. And when a person intends evil, that person starts to smell bad. And the angels smell that and so the angels already kind of have an indication based upon that smell what you're about to do. And you know, there's a very famous statement from one of the tabi'een who said that if sins had a smell, then you wouldn't want to sit next to me. SubhanAllah to the angels, it could be that they literally have that smell. Then you have a narration. It's a very famous hadith that Jibreel alayhi salam did not enter the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi because the Prophet sallallahu had a sculpture and he had a dog that was under the bed of Aisha radiallahu anha or belonged to Al-Hassan or Hussain radiallahu anhuma. And Jibreel alayhi salam said that, look, the angels do not enter a house that has dogs or suwat, pictures, drawings, sculptures, so on and so forth. Now that hadith raises many, many issues for us, right? Number one, look, if there is any house that the angels would enter despite something that they usually don't enter, it would have been the house of the Prophet ﷺ. So even the house of the Prophet ﷺ was not entered by Jibreel ﷺ in that situation. Number two, I mean, are we a dog-hating religion, right? Absolutely not. In fact, we know the hadith of a woman that entered into paradise because she gave water to a thirsty dog. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person could keep a hunting dog, a person could keep a dog that guards property or so on and so forth. This is obviously not a dog-hating religion per se. The only thing we're prohibited from is keeping a dog within the home because of impurities. Not that a dog is an impure animal, it's not a najis animal, but the saliva is impure. So if the saliva gets on you, you have to remove that najasa, you have to remove that impurity and so on and so forth. What about pictures? Suwar obviously in that time, there was no such thing as photography. It refers to sculptures and drawings and things of that sort. That's what taswir actually meant at that time. Now obviously if you're keeping pictures or taswir, you know, draw or so on and so forth, of living beings at a high place or in a place that it commands some form of respect, that's what the prohibition includes. So the prohibition won't include like a photo album or something that's on the carpet or kids' dolls or toys and things of that sort. It's referring to pictures that are held in honor. So either they're drawn, right, or they're sculpted or even photography, if it's put in that same place, then it would take the same ruling. Now also, is it that the angels are forbidden altogether from entering? Does that mean that if I don't want my angels to write down something I'm about to do, I'm going to put up a picture so that way the angels that write will leave. No, those angels are staying. 
this is clearly referring to Malaikatul Rahmah, the angels of mercy. Those are the ones that would not enter. And SubhanAllah, I looked for an explanation on the dogs and SubhanAllah, you find many, many, many different explanations. And this is just something obviously that you say Allah and His Messenger Wasallam know best. So, you know, whether it's the explanation that some dogs might have jinn inside of them, might have possession, and that's why the angels could not be there, just as they would not sit in the presence of shayateen. It could be that. It could be the najasa factor, the impurity of the saliva. It could be that the angels obviously occupy a very high space, and so that would be beneath them. Allah knows best. We don't delve into that. But don't do anything that's going to cause the angels to not be around you, and that's going to offend them, and stop them from coming either around you or in your house.